Welcome to the second part of 5.5, Bases Other Than E. We're going to focus on some applications today and remind ourselves about the net change theorem. So when a person takes a 100 milligram tablet of an asthma drug orally, the rate R, so that's key, we're talking about a rate, at which the drug enters the bloodstream is predicted to be R equals 5 times 0.95 to the T milligrams per minute. If the bloodstream does not contain any trace of the drug when the tablet is taken, determine the number of minutes needed for 50 milligrams to enter the bloodstream. So this is just telling us the net change theorem, okay? So we're given the rate, all right? We're given the rate. So in order to find the amount, remember about the net change theorem. So, so get this down. So the net change theorem is equal to the integral of the rate. That gives us our amount, okay? That's inside, all right? We're essentially looking at the area under that curve. So that represents our, our amount. So the integral from A to B of that rate is the net change in the amount from A to B on that interval. So if we were to look at this, right, and our graph is the time versus the units per time, which represents a rate, okay? And if this is our graph and our interval is from A to B, the net change is this amount, is this value, um, the area under the curve, okay? So just kind of going through that, now that brings us back to our problem here. So it tells us that the number of minutes needed for 50 milligrams to enter the bloodstream. So I want that net change to be 50 in our case, okay? So we're looking at this graph here where this blue curve represents our uh, R of T and the area under the curve represents our net change. We wanna figure out how much time it takes to get there, okay? So that leads us to our problem here. So we are given R of t equals 5 times 0.95 to the t. We want to take the integral of that from 0 to x because we want to figure out the time it takes of that rate. And we know that it equals 50. So now we just have to go through integrating it, and then it becomes an algebraic problem. So if I divide both sides by 5 right away, we have 10 is equal to that integral. Remember from the previous lesson, integrating this exponential, 0.95 to the t, we get 1 over ln of 0.95 times 0.95 to the t, and now we can evaluate that from 0 to x, okay? So just multiplying both sides by the ln of 0.95, because this is just a constant, it doesn't necessarily matter, and evaluating this portion from 0 to x, we're just left with 0.95 to the x minus 1 because anything raised to the 0 will give us 1. So now we're getting this portion here all by itself by adding 1 to both sides. And now we can take the ln of both sides to use some log properties to get x out of that exponent. So taking uh, the log of both sides, we can move x to be the coefficient. And now the last thing we have to do is divide by the natural log of 0.95 and throw it onto the calculator. All right, so verify that you do get 14.024 minutes. So that's how long it takes to get 50 milligrams of this um, drug into our bloodstream. These next couple of examples are more just to kind of show you where some of these exponentials come from and to remind us of average rate of change. So we're going to look at exponential growth and decay. So this first one, we're going to look at decay. The half-life of a radioactive substance is 10 years. So if the half-life is 10 years, and let's suppose we started with this amount A, all right, then in 10 years, we're at 500. And at 10 years after that, we're at 250. And 10 years after that, we're at 125. And then our net or our average rate of change. Well, remember, average rate of change is f of b minus f of a over b minus a. So 500 minus 1,000 over 10 minus 0, and we get negative 50. And so, so on and so forth, we can fill in this portion, okay? And then if we had an amount of 500, then at 10 years, we're down to 250 and 20, 125, et cetera. 
So then the average rate of change you can see is going down. So it's not the same average rate of change between every 10 year cycle. All right, so what our conclusion can be is that the rate, that average rate, depends on the amount of substance there is to begin with, okay? So that's why these are not all of the same on every interval, okay? But now let's get into some exponentials and kind of see where, um, where a formula that you've probably seen multiple times, where it comes from. So let's suppose we get n to be some amount, all right? And then the, um, the derivative of that substance is equal to k times n, some constant, right? All right, so now we need to kind of figure out, well, what is n? Let's, let's figure out what this amount is. Okay, so if we um, integrate both sides here, all right, I should have an integral there as well. Okay, so all I did was I uh, divided both sides by n and I multiplied by dt. Integrating 1 over n is simply ln of n. Integrating the right side, we get kt plus c. Well, to make our lives easier, let's just rewrite it as e to the ln of n is equal to e, or is equal to e to the kt plus c. Using our exponential properties, we can break up this right side to be e to the kt times e to the c. The left side just gets us to n, so that's good. We're able to get that all by itself. But what we should notice here is this e to the c that's just a constant. And so we can rewrite it as just C, okay? They're both constants, so typically we just write it as one big C. All right, so what is this C value? Well, if we start at the point zero and, and not, right, our initial amount, we can plug in accordingly. So N of zero is equal to our initial amount, which is equal to A to the k times zero, right, because t is zero, times our constant. Well, anything raised to the zero power is just one times c, so we get c to be this initial amount. So that leads us to our exponential equation or formula that you've probably seen many times in your science classes or more specifically biology um, when you're talking about exponential growth and decay. Now let's look at an example that deals with growth. So suppose you're investing $1,000 uh, for 10 years, all right, let's just say 10 years, and at 5% and it's compounded at these different values. We're gonna come back to this table. So first let's go through and explore some things. So if I invest $1,000 at 5%, all right, and let's just say it's compounded once per year. So then how much did I make at the end of the year? Well, I'm going to take this 1,000 and I'm going to multiply it by 1.05, okay? Well, what about if I let it sit in there for two years? So it's compounded every year, okay? So that means what I made last year is going to then be multiplied by 1.05. I'm going to get some more interest out of that. So another way we could rewrite it is 1,000 times 1.05 to the second. Okay, what if I have it for three years? So then we can say, all right, well, what we earned in that previous year, the balance at the end of that year, we're now going to multiply it by 1.05, talking about interest, okay? And we could rewrite it as 1,000 times 1 1.05 to the third power. So if I'm just letting it sit in there for T amount of years, we could generalize this to be 1,000 times 1 1.05 to the T. Okay, well... Typically, when we're talking about compounding it on different uh, intervals, not just annually, we can talk about um, monthly, daily, quarterly, et cetera, we're looking at our general formula of P, our principal, what we started at, times one plus R, the rate, over N, the number of times it's compounded per year, raised to the NT. So that leads us to these first uh, couple of boxes up here. So if we're investing that $1,000 and it's compounded twice a year, this is when n is going to equal 2, 
okay? And we just throw it into that general formula, and we have 1,000 times 1 plus 0 0.05 over 2 to the 2t. Now, if I'm keeping it in there for 10 years, we could go ahead and figure out what that is by plugging 10 in for t. If I'm compounding this monthly, that simply means n is now 12, 12 times per year, okay? And all we're going to do is substitute uh, 12 in for n, and we get our uh, formula here. Again, if I'm keeping it in there for 10 years, we can throw t equals 10 and put it on the calculator and, and figure out what we have after 10 years. Okay, but what if we go to continuously, right? Continuously. Hopefully you remember that that's a different formula. So where did that formula come from? Well, let's suppose we're using this general formula from the left side over here, and let's let x equal n over r, okay? If x equals n over r, then n is equal to x times r, all right? So I'm just going to solve for n here by multiplying both sides by r. All right, so I'm going to make some substitutions. So if this is our general, instead of n, we have x times r, and instead of this n, we have x times r again. Just kind of rewriting it, noticing the r's are going to cancel here. Okay, our r's cancel. And then looking at this, 1 plus 1 over x to the x. There's a theorem in our book, and we'll talk more about this um, later on in the school year. But for now, this just allows us to um, get to our PERT equation. So the theorem says the limit as x approaches infinity of 1 plus 1 over x to the x equals e. All right. So like I said, this is going to come into play more so later on, but it certainly helps to know this. Okay, so based off of that theorem, we could go ahead and say that this value is really E. So that leads us to our compounding continuously uh, formula, where it's our, our principal times E to the RT. So that's our compounded continuously, and if you compare it to the formula that we um, derived on the previous page, N equals N naught times E to the KT, these are essentially the same formula. One is more so for biology using uh, those uh, typical variables, N and not and K, versus um, investing money, where we're talking about an amount, a principal, a rate, and time there. So using that, we could then figure out, okay, if we are um, investing this $1,000 and it's compounded continuously, that's where we're using our PERT formula. So P, 1,000 times E to the rate times time. If you have questions, let me know.